welcome welcome this is the simply king podcast and this is your boy rodney perry king himself and you just tuned into the soulfully conscious podcast for humans simply being humans this is also being recorded on my ig live so all the people that you know gonna come on to ig it's gonna be dope it's gonna be what's up yo what's happening to young devo devu devu is that how is that how you say it devu i'm not sure you changed your name i feel like i know you are though and um but no, so people are going to be joining in. I'm definitely going to be going on random you little shout out tangents and people are definitely going to be talking to me through. So for all the people who are just audio listeners, that is what's causing the interruption. I'm not in a I'm not in a coffee shop or nothing talking. It's um I'm just, you know, interacting with the people on live. That's all it is. But let's first let me first say thank you to the island of Jamaica and specifically the resort town of Negril. I had such a good time. I got a tan, went out there and celebrated my girl's 25th birthday. It was such a good time. Um, did, definitely did not put out an episode last week because of it, but I had to come out. Um, I had to come out and come back with something. And I think, you know, it was some, it was definitely something I feel like people, everybody was talking about. And I'm like, I gotta say something to it. I don't got much time, but I'm going to speak to it anyway so but first let's start with the twitter check in uh for everybody who's listening the twitter check in is essentially my little you know little highlight from twitter something that i noticed a tweet that i've thought was funny something that or just a, something to elaborate on because you can't put it all in 280 characters sometimes sometimes you got to go a little bit deeper especially on Twitter. And this one is something that I'm very passionate about. Somebody uh, tweeted out on the first, uh, a simple, let's settle this, which usually this means, you know, which is the best is the question that she's asking. And essentially it has nine different hot sauces. So it's the legendary hot sauce debate. And on this thing, there is Tabasco hot sauce, Tabasco sauce, Crystal's hot sauce, Frank's Red Hot, Texas Pete, Cholula, Sriracha, or Sriracha. I'm not sure how to say it either way. Um, Valentina hot sauce, Tapatio, and the legendary Louisiana hot sauce. Now, it said, which is the best to me? I didn't follow the instructions. And I tweeted out what I felt. And I wanted to elaborate with each one for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because I think y'all got to understand. And y'all can agree with me. Y'all can debate, you know, your mom and all them. Because I know I'm right. And you can't tell me I'm not even close to your own preference. I know I am. I know I am. And if I'm not, then you just don't eat right. You just haven't eat, been eating right. You haven't tried all of these in the way that you need to have all of these to be able to say that you know what this is and you know what it ain't. But I'll go through the list. First, Tabasco hot sauce. It's only good if it's the Chipotle version and and that's it. It's only good if it's Chipotle version and you're putting it on Chipotle. And maybe something else in your house, if you make some type of Mexican dish and that's what you got because you stole the Chipotle, uh, you know what I'm saying, Tabasco sauce. But if you, you're using the regular Tabasco sauce on anything, it is not going to be good. It's going to be like vinegar with vinegar tomato juice. It is not going to cut it. It's just not. It's not going to work. It's not good. It's not good. Understand me. Then you have Crystal's hot sauce. Crystal's hot sauce if you know anything about Crystal's hot sauce, nine times out of ten, you only see it in obscurity. You're only going to see it at a at a fried chicken spot, a fish spot, probably a chicken and fish spot. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they got it in a bottle. Sometimes they got it packets. Only time you're going to find Crystal's is usually in these type of spots. A lot of different southern, you know, real, you know, uh, real authentic soul food spots where they, you know, only serve on certain days only give you a certain thing. You got to pick your entree. They got somebody grandma back there in the back. It's something happening. Crystals is for these types of places, for your favorite chicken, chicken fish spot. 
and you're having it at the chicken or fish spot. What's happening, Austin? How you feeling, bro? Um, then you have Frank's Red Hot. Now, this is a debatable one because I know a lot of black people who love Frank's Red Hot sauce personally. And like, this is what they're like, all purpose sauce is. This is the go to. You better have it in the in the cupboard. You know what I'm saying? Type of hot sauce. And I just I'm going to have to I'm going to have to I'm going to have to push back on it. You know what I'm saying? Frank's red hot sauce is only good with wings. What's happening, Stretch? What's going on, sir, Stretch? It's only good with wings. I'm talking about the Frank's red hot buffalo or the red hot sauce. It's really only good if you're making hot wings. I'm sorry. That's all it's good for. It's thick. It's buttery. It's just like what you need for a good buffalo sauce. It That's what it is. That's what it needs to be regulated to. I'm sorry. If that's your all-around sauce, that's on you. But I'm telling you, it's better out there. Then you got Texas Pete. Texas Pete is not bad. Texas Pete is okay. I'm telling you. It gets the job done. It's kind of like the joint that, you know, she she put it all together. You know what I'm saying? She got a cool little body. You know what I'm saying? She about a good good two, three more weeks of staying on that routine and that food plan to being the baddie that she can be. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, she love, you know, cold cuts. And she loves, you know what I'm saying, her little sedentary job. So it's, you know, it's holding her back from being in her full fineness of how she sees herself. You feel me? That is what Texas Pete is. Texas Pete is the okay one in the bunch. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't, you deserve to be here. You deserve to be invited and, and to sit in this section. But to know, but no, if we only knew you were sitting in this section, you probably wouldn't get in this section. Somebody who looked better than you. You know what I'm saying? That is what Texas Pete is. If you are out of Louisiana hot sauce, this is what you get. That is simple. That is what you get. Um, then you have Cholula. Cholula hot sauce. Cholula hot sauce is only for Tex-Mex. If you eating Tex-Mex, that's the only time you need to eat Cholula. Some people may argue with me, but that's just my opinion. Cholula is very, very commercial. It's a very commercial Mexican style high sauce. I don't know. That's just how that is. You gotta let that one go. It's just not gonna it's not gonna go with everything. You can't put that on everything. That's you can't be the best if you can't put it on everything. Period. This can't go on everything. It only goes on Tex Mex. So that means Taco Bell, if you forgot to get any sauce, any of your little fire hots or anything like that. If you got some Cholula in the house, which you should have more than one type of hot sauce in your house, people. Please buy more than one type of hot sauce. You're not eating right. You're just not. The flavors are different. These things have different purposes. You cannot, just because it says hot sauce does not mean you slather it on everything. It ruins it. It ruins it. Understand me when I say that. It ruins it. Then you have um, uh, sriracha. Now, with sriracha, this is when I was starting to run out of characters. But for me, for me, Sriracha only makes sense for pho, ramen, really just Asian cuisines. You know what I'm saying? You can get away with sriracha on, you know, maybe as within a within a sauce, like, you know, people doing sriracha ranch these days. Whatever you choose to do, for me, sriracha does not go on everything. People trying to force sriracha onto everything. That is in, in Chicago and uh, probably in a lot of other major cities. They're trying to make sriracha like the default hot sauce. That is not what it is. I ask for a hot sauce, not sriracha. Do not bring me this thick, spicy ketchup. Please do not do that. It is not cool. I'm not here for it, and that is not right. And also, I think sriracha is a uh, popular one in the streets because of white people. They, um, it's not that spicy. kind of has a little bit of tang or sweetness to it. So it mellows any little spice out. And I think that's why it's so popular and they try to put it everywhere and put it on everything. That is my only conclusion when it comes to that. Then moving on to the real, to the, to the coup de gras, you know what I'm saying? And that's Valentina. Valentina high sauce. If you don't know what Valentina high sauce is, this, this should tell you everything you need to know because you probably would have been cool with a Cholula if you went to 
pulled up to the Mexican spot trying to get you a little taco or trying to get you a little enchilada or chimichanga or whatever thing that you think is a real Mexican food. Valentina is when you go to the authentic spot. You feel me? The hole in the wall where the tacos are a nice, good, cheap price. You know what I'm saying? They got what they got lingua, lingua, lingua in on the menu, which I think is like some cow tongue or something like that. They got some tripe on the menu. That's when you in the real places. You know what I'm saying? When they out here selling literally like intestines, you feel me? That is when you know. And they're gonna have Valentina there. Probably gonna have Valentina in different flavors. Gonna probably have a green bottle and a red bottle. We're talking about either one. Doesn't matter. Both of them good. And you should use them for real Mexican food. If you want to just put a little dab on your tacos, put a little dab on your burrito, put it set a little bit to the side, whatever you choose to do, Valentina is going to get you that. That is for that is not good on Tex-Mex. You cannot try to elevate your Tex-Mex with Valentina. You eat Valentina with real Mexican food. Understand me. That's it. Then moving on to Tapatio. Tapatio... It's probably the best for Americanized Mexican food. So this may be a spot where, now it's different than Tex-Mex. Understand the difference. Taco Mac is Tex-Mex. Um, on the border, uh, Uncle Julio's, um, stuff like that is what Amer- what I see as Americanized Mexican food. It's, you know, it's a little bit step close because you think they, they trying to, their best to be authentic, even though they're probably not doing a good job at it. But it's still Mexican food that you're eating because of the elements and the herbs and spices and things. Tapatio is your go-to. That's where you go to. You feel me? That's where your that's where home is. You know what I'm saying? That's where Casa is. You feel me? That is what it is. That's what you got to do. Now, last but definitely not least, you have, and I spent a good 10 minutes and that should tell you how passionate I am about this. Ten minutes of straight high sauce talk so you know you're getting the real when it's coming from meeting, if I can give you that much. Lastly, you have the legendary all purpose. You seen you you y'all seen baby boy at least a hundred times. Y'all know what it sounds like when I say all purpose. That means you can have this in your purse, you can have this in your bag. No one would think that you're crazy because this is for everything. No matter where you're about to go, whatever function you're about to go to and experience, the fact you came prepared with a bottle of Louisiana know that you're ready for whatever it is. You're ready for whatever. Whatever the flavor is going to get you there because it's the it's just a good amount of a good hint, a good amount of heat. It tastes great, a great viscosity on it. It's not too thick. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving y'all this is some grade A stuff. Understand. Send this to your person who don't understand what Louisiana hot sauce is. If they never tasted it, they should go to Louisiana and buy a full set. They got different flavors. The people don't even know that. Everybody don't even know that stretch. That is the best. It is the best that you can go to. You have all these other, you know, because, you know, Hot sauce is now a thing, thanks to like hot ones and a few other influences. So you got all these craft hot sauces and hot sauces that, that you know are getting a lot of attention now, and people trying to buy because of whatever, whatever. And people trying to buy stuff out of you know from when they go to the islands and stuff, and that's cool, that's all right. But Louisiana hot sauce is the greatest. Hot sauce is number one, hands down, bar none. Period. If you don't got that in yo, if you don't got that in yo, that's what my mama. That's how my mama raised. That's how my mama raised me. If you don't got Louisiana hot sauce, at least that much. Louisiana hot sauce, some um, onion powder, garlic powder, um, uh, some syrup. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you eating? Are y'all really eating salt, pepper, either seasonal, Lyle Reese, or Tony Sachets? If you don't got some of these things, like we gotta, we gotta check people cupboards. You know what I'm saying? We gotta, if you gotta help your friend, and just go buy them seasoning. Some people need to do that just so they can enjoy what they make in their house a little bit better. Because I think some people are not living their lives to the fullest potential right now. You can't be if you don't got the shits. But I prolonged, and I had to be 
had to introduce this episode with a cool, with something funny and something enjoyable because what I'm a, the rest of this episode may not be that way. <laughs> it's going to be somewhat gloomy and somewhat constructive, though. Um, and it's something that I want to just talk about and feel I, I really feel very strongly on. And that is, we all heard about the Botham John case and what the results of that case was. And I think the crazy part about it was it wasn't just the fact that, you know, yet again, very a very light hand of justice was served. And I think this was the time where I think this we I think so many people were invested in this case for the obvious reasons that this was probably the first time that this was probably going to be something that was going to be closed and shut. There's no way in hell this woman cannot not go to jail. But it we were not <laughs> canceling it out that it was it wasn't going to be possible. It very well could have happened where she could have just walked and they could have found some legal reason for her to be able to to just walk free. But um, I'm glad that she's getting some jail time. I'm not glad at, you know, the amount of jail time that she's getting. I think she definitely deserves more just because it's so egregious um, and because just all of those different things. But I think the thing that went viral, because it wasn't just the fact that 10 years it was all that she got. It was the fact that both of John's brother, Brent John, um, hugged. He gave this emotional little closing remark, I guess, about how he wants to be her friend. He doesn't want her to feel, you know, pain and he wants to stay in touch. And can I hug her? Asking the judge that and she allowed it. And they somewhat ran into each other's arms, embraced each other, you know. A lot of people had a lot of things to say about this, and I said something on my live on my live. I think the day it happened because I literally felt some type of way about it in the moment. For me, and I'll reiterate some things that I said, and that's I think you know it's it's nothing wrong with forgiveness. Forgiveness is for you, and the reason why I, I want to start with that by because let's put emphasis on for you. It's for you. We cannot. We cannot exercise forgiveness for other people or for the consciousness of other people. Um, and especially for not for the mass of consciousness either. Him choosing to do that is the way he chose to do that. I cannot be against somebody because forgiveness to sit there and have hate in your heart, it definitely weighs on you. Would I have done that? No. I think most people wouldn't have done that. I think that's what everybody was projecting online. They were mad at him, and people even went as far as, you know, and I think his dad even did the most by talking about how he wants to be a friend, which that just was kind of strange. And I think the mom was the only one who kind of cleaned it up somewhat. And then you had the judge hugging her too, which really didn't make sense. My whole thing is I'm not going to tell anybody how to forgive. Um, because that's on you. That's on. That's up to you, and whatever makes sense for you. I think my problem came in the fact that he did it in front of all these cameras, and I I, I want people to understand. I'm not saying this because oh, black people, you know, we gotta, we can't be doing all these things in front of white people, and and all. That. That's not what I'm saying. I care more about black optics towards other black people. And I know it's hard us living in this time and this life where we kind of go back and forth for wanting to be seen as individuals. But right now we haven't developed that muscle. We need to develop that muscle because if we were anybody else, this would just be this guy. This would just be him. That would be how he decided to do it. And that's on him. We wouldn't have done it. But that's on him. But because we have this such, this strong sense of community, because we want to feel, and it's crazy that it's it's this moment. And that's why I got That's why I had to come and talk to y'all about it because in this moment we're searching for our own humanity because of we're hoping that justice can be served because a a, a life that did not deserve this type of you know canceling and like termination. Is now not here by way, and now 
it's all we're just supposed to be okay about it because that's what people see. They see Brant, and they see his actions, and they see it as he's acting not in the way that we believe he should. Because we would do things differently. We have this sense of community. And it's beautiful in moments. It's great in moments, but it also puts us in a bind, too. Because we can't just be our own people. We can't just live our own lives, make our own choices, and for them to only affect the individual making those choices. And I think that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest issue that we have right now in America. And it's being black is living a nuanced life. And the this family and all these people, and especially that judge who was just spooky. That's weird. That's just weird. I don't think it's all about just kind of this whole um I don't I really can't sit here and say that it's all about some type of uh white coddling, not want to see this white woman, whatever. I definitely, I don't think it's just that. I think genuinely that um, he could just genuinely want the best for her. I personally believe that that's, that just isn't the way he should, he could have handled it. I think it just could have been different. He could have still forgiven her in the way that he wanted to, but it's all about the display that I think matters the most because I feel like, it does hold it does send a certain image it does send a certain message it does it does it just does and even and it's one that i don't think we as a community and a community of individuals are ready to see we have a joined experience and a joined history that we all kind of come together and in solidarity on to know that we don't know. We don't understand our past fully. We don't understand so many things about what how we ended up into certain predicaments and what what is ahead. But I think we got to understand that we have to build on our humanity and we're fighting for our humanity every damn day. And I think that's really what it is. I feel like that's really the biggest part of what it is. I just I just believe black optics do matter. <laughs> I think what we do in front of each other matters. And um, because we know what they're going to do with it. We know that the mainstream media is going to contort and push and, and and make it into something way nasty, way, and we're going to go with it. It's going to only create more divides, only create more division amongst ourselves, and we shouldn't. We should not see him as dumb and foolish and just some all of that. We shouldn't see that as that because forgiveness is a good thing. But we don't like that person so much that and also we just want to win. We want to feel the win. We want to feel like. Like we got we got the one up on something. I think that's really why we projected that much onto Brent in that whole situation. I just feel like we had to learn how to I don't know, I feel like we have to learn how to do a lot of things that I think are very hard, just simply skilled things that we just don't know how to do well as a community. I think for one, we don't know how to really present ourselves as individuals and operate within communities as individuals just because as a group we've been held back. And I think it's there two things can happen at once. I think we can still present ourselves and be our own selves and create and like really claim our own individual agency and all the things that we identify with. But I do think that we have to learn patience with each other. Um, so many different influences and things like that. I always feel like, you know, the pe- so many pe- influencers and people with, you know, some type of platform have been saying a lot lately how black people throw our own away way more than white people do. What I believe, what my theory on all that is, is this simply that we want something to happen. We want to have our way in some way, shape, or form. 
I think when it comes to things we were genuinely, seriously passionate about, that being just living our lives, that means just getting a slice of the pie, being able to get some money, being able to live in peace, being able to just feel safe. I think when it comes to those things, we get so adamant about those things to the point to where we'll take anything to win. We'll take anything to get what a lot of us want. Even if we're divided on the thing that we want, it's just we split ourselves up into cells of interest and influence of on Twitter, you know, and on Facebook and all these other things to be like, no, they're canceled, no matter who they are. Because if the black people are doing bad things, you're making us look bad. You're canceled. You're hurting other black people. You're canceled. You're this white person doing this and the third. You're canceled. And I think that's just with us internally. I personally also don't believe that there's anything wrong with that. I think the fact that that's a question is putting the the fact that that's a statement that black people throw their own away more than white people is it put it assumes the impression that white people move within they only move as a unit when it's benefiting them. They don't move as a unit all the time. Um, but I think there's an answer to that. I think there's a reason to that. I believe our culture is so disjointed. White people have their own communities where it's just them. They, they have other, other, you know, ethnic groups have their own communities, their own language even. So even when they're in public in mixed company, they still can, put themselves into a vacuum of wherever they're from, whatever the culture is and speak that language and you not have no clue what's going on. They can still cut people out. They can still keep and retain what they are um, culturally. And I think we have the ability to do that. I think we just have to grow that patience with each other and truly cultivate that. But the thing about it is it's hard. We all got to work because we're, you know, the, on the la- you know, on the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to society, but we are seen as the the movers and shakers of progress to a certain degree and diversity to a certain degree. That's we, we we have these weird new responsibilities that we didn't ask for, but I think that's what has to happen. I think we have to find ways to create and establish safe place safe spaces and places to where we can communicate with each other. We can have hard, harsh conversations. Everything doesn't need to be televised. Everything does not need to be televised. We, yes, you know what I'm saying? The revolution was televised, but will not be televised. That's how it needs to continue. It will need to stay not televised. We do not, like the Revolt Conference is cool, it's not as dope, but and that could be published so that people around the world can see it. But also, but also there should be meetings, there should be think tanks um, happening where people are talking about specific issues. Like I think at Revolt, having things like that truly can start a way to build on creating safe spaces with diverse people within the rooms, with diverse opinions. I don't agree with bringing Candace Owens on. I think Candace Owens it was there for shock value in my opinion i think it would have been i think with a little bit of um with a little bit of research i think it could have you could have found someone who has conservative views can speak towards those conservative views publicly and if they aren't somebody who is quote unquote super famous you it's revolt if you got killer mike ti and all these other people on here it's going to draw attention you push what it is but you don't have to platform someone who really isn't adding anything <laughs> to the conversation, only being an echo chamber for things, and just genuinely not really presenting to be for, like, it just, it, she's not a real expert on anything. It's really not, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to have her own coming from the perspective that she's coming from. That's just me, though. Because I believe they got each one of those people because they're experts in whatever they are in. And, I, you know, you can even try to come at T.I. And, um, and Killer Mike, but they are certainly have been have grown to become more qualified within specific areas. 
and that's the perspective that they were presenting them with um, from a sense of community building, I think is the area where they both kind of came from, um, which I feel like is important. I feel like you should have those type of people in the room. Um, but I'm going to wrap it up because I've been talking long enough. And, uh, oh, look at me. I think I'm right at 30, 30 minutes. But I want to send it on. I want to send it on. And sending it on is my little wrap-up, my call of action that I give to y'all. Uh, for all of the listeners on IG, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. And everybody who sees this, I appreciate y'all as well. I got to get on IG Live more just to talk to the people. I might do, you know, some type of questions, some type of question game, maybe start some shit, maybe have people join me and we talk about whatever it is. Uh, I think that's something that I'm going to continuously do. I'm going to try to do that on a weekly basis. Just kind of have a question of the day or question of the week or whatever, whatever, and throw that out there, but also create some space for people to ask me questions too and just give them some non-biased uh some type of non-biased take but i digress sending it on sending it on sending it on is my last words my conclusion to everything all i can say is and reiterate is genuinely that we must learn and acknowledge that to be black in america is to live a nuanced experience we cannot sit here and think that we're just like everybody else because we are not we do not live in a similar experience with everybody else. That we have intersections, we have similarities, we have things that we, you know, also contrast on. We also disagree. Like we disagree and agree with certain things with people. Um, we share. We share hate with other individuals who don't look like us. We share love with other other individuals who don't look like us. But still, in the same breath, it is different. To be, you put black in front of any single occupation, any single title, any single anything, it will change the meaning of what that thing is. We are forever living in a nuanced life. It's just what it is. And that nuance is, I think, by nature and by nurture. I think we're meant to be that way, and I think we're also nurtured to be that way. Um just because of the things that are influenced on us and put on us throughout society. I think that's just how our existence is. And um, it's all on us to kind of pick and choose and fight back and create systems to really push back on the things that, you know, really don't help us at all. But we're going to send it on. We're going to send it on. Next week, uh, next week and the rest of the month, I plan on having guests and having some cool topics uh, but this was a special delivery. I hope you enjoy it. I plan on doing more special deliveries because I feel like next year is going to be a wild, wild year <laughs> where, uh, I think election with elections and it just being 2020, that just sounds like a really interesting sound like something's going to be in the stars for that one. It just makes sense to me, but I digress. Love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you listen to the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for Humans Simply Being Humans. Did I do my rolling? I don't even think I did my rolling. Um, you just listen to the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for Humans Simply Being Humans. I'm Rodney Perry, and this is Simply King. Check this out, check this out. I go by the name, I go by the name. Uh, uh, P, P. Yeah, yeah. He goes by the name.